We have risen from the ashes to school the masses. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Scholars of Wrestling Show, episode 463. I'm your man behind the microphone, Scholar Jeff. Joining us this week, as always, he is the OG Undisputed Scholar. He is the world's heavyweight champion of the Scholars of Wrestling Show. And he is a damn handsome man. He is Scholar Tarek. Scholar Tarek. How are you doing this evening, sir? Oh, bonjour. Welcome. Uh, I will say it is kind of sad that you didn't introduce yourself as the Scholars of Wrestling Party champion. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm that <laughs> thing. Yeah, the, this this belt here. That, that's what that means. I'm the Scholars of Wrestling Party champion. I'm just you know, so for on someone... a roll with doing the intro, and I just for, I forgot to sing my own praises. I mean, oh, that that problem will be quickly remedied, I, I assure you. I sure, I, I sure hope so. I mean, for a guy that has declared himself the greatest Scholars of Wrestling Party champion in the history of Scholars of Wrestling, yeah, well, ride you, that, ride high, that high horse. You know what? Sometimes you gotta be, ha- you gotta have that own confidence in yourself. But other times, you know, you, you gotta be humble. You, you gotta be the, the most humble, most personable person in the room. And you, know, what other way to be a party champion than to be the life of said party to be the one to keep things cool wherever you go, whatever party it is, especially when it's a scholars of wrestling party. Uh, or there's just you party too hard and you just forgot who you were. But I do not forget the belt. Oh, the, hey, it all red and what? silver. God, I forget the belt one time and it's just never going to let that go. I wasn't even thinking that. I'm just thinking of. My cherished title belt right here. But hey, that is not the belt that's on the line here, nor is it your belt, because this prediction game is going to be for a number one contendership match for that Scholars of Wrestling Championship. Is that correct? That is correct. Between you, Scholar Jeremy, and Scholar Brian, because we had that four way tie last pay per view. Yeah. But hey, technically I'm still de- I'm technically still defending because I got a beefcase holder that's ready to cash in on me on this prediction show. I absolutely know it. Especially now that you just reminded him and the rest of the universe that that's waiting in the wings. Oh no, he remembers. He oh, I boy. filled him in. I filled him in on the last time. He asked questions about it. I filled him in on the rules. He knows exactly what's gonna happen. Oh and, dear, you're yeah, in trouble. Yeah, I I'm just I'm going to cherish this on my shoulder for the last time for now because I'll definitely win it back. Oh, and boy. Who knows when that's going to be, but I'll, I'll win her back. Oh. Now it's just Charlie has to come and take it from me. <laughs> oh. I've got plenty of ideas for that one, but before we get to all that, we have a pay-per-view coming from France that we need to get through. We've got WWE Backlash on the horizon this very weekend. And of course that means we got predict the sucker. So with Mm -hmm. that, let's just dive right in. This is WWE backlash France Mm -hmm. kicking things off with our very first prediction of the night. We've got a tag team match, Randy Orton and Kevin Owens versus solo Sokoa and Tama Tonga, the new bloodline, so to speak. Uh, Tarek as the defending champion, even though it's not defensive. Either way, you're the champion. You get option of first pick or to defer to me. Which way I'll you go? I'll defer to you. I'll defer to you this time. Well, alrighty then. Let me just put that belt down, and I will make my first pick on this. Given that there's no titles on the line, it's strictly a grudge match. And given the fact that Tama Tonga, as of this recording, has not yet had a match yet, I'm going to have to go with the Bloodline to win this one because they've very clearly been pushing this new chapter of the Bloodline saga with Sosako and Tama Tonga. And Tama Tonga, the world needs to really see what that man can actually do, which is quite a lot, but there's a lot of people who haven't seen him yet, and this is going to be the ideal way to show him off to the WWE Universe and the fandom. Tarek, which way are you going? 
I'm also going to go with the new bloodline to win this one because when you we're at a point right now that the bloodline doesn't have Roman, it doesn't have the rock, it doesn't have the main players of that stable. And in order for this new bloodline, especially with this new character uh, direction for Solo Sokoa, as, the, as pretty much the new tribal chief, the self-proclaimed tribal chief, I feel like they they really do need this win. And the way I see it is a debuting Jacob Fatu to help them win. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I'm... Um... I'm not quite sure where Jacob Fatu is going to show up. If I'm not sure if it's going to be quite that soon, but it certainly wouldn't surprise me either. But speaking of tag team matches, we also have scheduled the defense of the women's tag team titles. We've got the Kabuki Warriors of Asuka and Kairi Sane defending their championships against... Uh, the team that is being officially dubbed by our group chat as the Muscle Mommies. We've got Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair. Tarek, it's your pick first. Which way are you going? I'm not dubbing them that. Only Jeremy is dubbing them that. <laughs> Jeremy dubbed them that, and I'm just I'm just gonna roll it. They're muscle mommies in my heart. Go on. I won't go that far. Um I would. There's a, there's only one mommy for me, uh, which I'm going to go with Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair to win this one. And the only reason I say that is because I think this is just continuing build for their inevitable one-on-one -on -one match. And in order for us, the audience, to really believe that they're this is not going to just be a grudge match. It's going to start becoming personal is them winning the tag team titles together and slowly build a friendship that is doomed to end really soon. Hmm. Could be, could be. Add yeah, more meat to their match than just a grudge match. And speaking match, speaking of meat, rather, I'm also going to go with the muscle mommies just because it seems like that. I don't see it. I don't think that this is going to be the match where Jade Cargill loses for the first time. I think you're absolutely spot on. I think there's going to be something here to give Jade Cargill a little oomph. But then when that breakup happens, no matter how it happens, it's going to position another tag team, especially right at, since we're right coming off right after the draft. This could be the perfect time to give another tag team a, a little bit of a rub, a little bit of shine. Uh, I've got my own thoughts as to who that might be, but, uh, you know, we'll see if I'm proven right. But now, my good man, because that there's four of us and there is going to be possibly a lot of, a lot of ties here, we need a tiebreaker question. And I believe this is going to be the match to do it. So between the four of us, or no, the three of us who are going to be competing for a number one contendership match against you, we need to make some random picks, which means we're going back to the ever-present Wheel of Names, where uh, we will re be all be randomly assigned a wrestler in the match, and if they are the ones to get the pin, well, hey. We get an extra point, and that could break any potential ties we run into tonight. Are you ready to spin the wheel? I'm just now expecting, because there's four women, three of you, the one that like nobody picks is going to be ending up the one who actually makes the pin and makes this whole tiebreaker completely inv invalid. <laughs> oh, no. You say, uh, yeah, the someone is going to go somewhere with this. So you know what? The rest of the four of us are all going to pick each individual one, starting with me, and I will spin that wheel. The wheel is spinning. The wheel is spinning. Who will I get for my random pick? And my random pick coming through in the clutch is Asuka. Very interesting. Okay. That's looking promising for me. I could pick up that sarcasm in your voice. 
No, honestly, I'm I think Asuka has if the muscle mommies lose, then Asuka would very easily make the pin on this. Next up is our man Brian. Brian's spinning his wheel. Whose deal will he make on the wheel names rhymes? Kyrie Sane. Now, because Charlie and Jeremy are both not here, I'm going to leave it up to the current champ. Who is going to, should Jeremy get the, or if we're going in traditional order, Jer, uh, Charlie, rather, would be getting the next spin. But since Jeremy is in the, actually in the thing, do we want to give him the next spin? Yes. Okay, very well. Then, Jeremy, listen up, because your pick is up now. And we're going to spin this wheel. The wheel is spinning. Which way are you dealing? We've got, for Jeremy, we Bianca have Belair. Bianca Belair. Which, you know what? With a pick, with a pick like that, with a pick like Jade Cargill, Charlie has, has actually does have a very strong case to actually pull off exactly what you're describing. In which case, we're, we may have an issue in the future, but hey, that's for tomorrow's problem. For right now, we still have three more matches to predict, sir. And with that, I believe it's my pick up next. For this next match, we've got a triple threat match. For the WWE Women's Championship, we've got Bailey defending her championship in the triple threat match against Naomi and Tiffany Stratton. Huh. This actually may be the, one of the harder matches for me to predict. I don't see Bailey losing it this fast, but. I don't see it going to Naomi, but I think there could be a possible chance it could go to Tiffany Stratton. But I think I'm more inclined in this case to take the easy way out. And I think I'm going to go with Bailey to retain. We should have saved this wheel for this one if it was going to be triple threat and it's just you three guys go for, for the title. You know what? Look, give me one second to reset this. I'm going to reset the wheel. We're going to make some extra picks. We're taking that point away from Charlie. He's not in the title match. He doesn't deserve it. <laughs> you already, he has the he's beef already, case. He's, he's already got the beef case. He's already got his edge. We're fine. He's already, And he's most likely tying with me. He's essentially getting the title anyway. <laughs> so. <laughs> Jeez, why don't you just put all the business out there? Why don't you? I am. It would be dumb of me to think otherwise. Because if I were in his shoes, once that pay-per-view starts, I would be cashing in too. All that aside, do you want to make your predictions official while I update the wheel? I'm going with Bailey to win because they're setting up between setting up Bailey and Nia Jax. Very good. And with that, we are locked in. And now it's time for another round of of random predictions. So we'll just completely erase the four the four point the randomness unless you want to and have make it more interesting. Already no, wait. All right, we'll erase it. Yeah, it's just it's only this is only for you three guys. Yes. All right. So You're the main focus of this episode. Because we're going in a little bit out of order at this point, who get because you're the defending champion, who gets the first pick? I'm going to go with my Undisputed Scholars tag partner, Scholar Brian. Okay. In that case, Brian, it's his first spin up. The wheel is spinning. Who's it going to be? And for Brian, we have... Oh, Brian's getting Bailey. There you go. Uh, I'm starting to believe this could be a mistake. <laughs> I don't keep it's like if I lose the title, Brian could try and rent it back from Charlie. Jeremy, it's his time to spin. Which way is Jeremy going? Jeremy is Tiffany getting Stratton. tip. Jeremy is getting tiffy time. Oh, I, I think he would like that one because, yeah. And I she, get she would have been my number two. 
I am not winning this at all, am I? I don't know. You know, it's not. Oh, yeah. Come on. I'm sorry. Naomi's the one getting the pin. She's getting pinned. Oh, delightful. They're not going to pin Tiffany Stratton. Mm. <laughs> sorry, fool. Eh, so you're, still some, you're still the party champion. You're still the party champion. I am the greatest you have a title. party champion in the history of the history, and I, don't you forget it. In the meantime, speaking of champions, we got more champions to talk about. We've got Damian Priest defending his World Heavyweight Championship against Jay Uso. This, to me, is an early pick for match of the night. But first, we got to predict it. Cool. Which way are you going? You say it's an early about to be match of the night. And all honesty, this is the match I'm looking forward to the least. Hmm. Because I'm just... I just honestly don't believe in Jay Uso being the number one face of Raw. Like, even though they had Cody Rhodes pro- like proclaim him the top face of that brand, and all it, until CM Punk is uh, back in, he's re- he's the real number one, even injured. And the kind of the same argument can be said about Damian Priest about him being the number two heel. Compare it uh, behind Drew McIntyre. Um, this has been a very lackluster feud, in my opinion. I'm they haven't really done anything to sell me, and the fact that they used their that WWE didn't even book the uh, Raw segment between them, and that it was it was basically Logan Paul booking this as a commercial for his for Prime. That's why he had Patrick Mahomes there out there with them. It's just adding more fuel to flames. Like this, they really don't care. I don't. I see Damian Priest uh, successfully retaining. I just, as much as they're trying to push Jay Uso as that as that real top uh, babyface, I just don't see it. I'll tell you what, I totally agree with you on every single capacity, but one. I agree that Priest is going to retain his championship. The one thing I do not agree with you is Jay's position on the card. Because I'll be honest, I used to feel the same exact way. I'm just like, okay, Jay, I I don't just don't see him as that top guy until I went to WrestleMania 40. I got a sense of where the general wrestling fandom was at. And let me tell you, Jay Uso is over. People love main event Jay Uso. The yeet and the and the entrance and every people are really getting into Jay Uso. So like I could if this were like maybe three months down the line and they were having this match, then I could absolutely see it being plausible that you know what? Jay Uso could reasonably win this sucker. But it is not that time yet. And this is, like you said, the build hasn't really been there to the degree it pro- it should for a traditional, like, big feud title match thing. So because of that, I this because of its status is sort of like, okay, big name versus big name for a France pay-per-view, go. Because of its status, I don't think we're going to see a title change. Although I... I do think Jay Uso is absolutely in that echelon of being worthy for Damian Priest's championship. I just don't think that uh, you're right. I don't think it's going to be the right time for a Jay Uso title win. That's going to be at least a few months down the road. As for tonight, Damian Priest wins. The only real counter argument I have with you about Jay being over, I feel more like his entrance and the yeet is more over than he is like how wwe felt that the yes the yes chant the yes movement was over was more over than uh daniel bryan and they tried to move it to big show but once and the fans are like no we are it's not it's not just the chant it's the man who behind that i just don't feel the same i don't feel that similar capacity i feel like yeah the yeet and the the like the motion, the entrance is is actually the more over thing. 
but that's that's just how I feel about it because I just it just I even felt this way when they had him go for the Intercontinental Championship and I'm just going I don't want him to win it because I just don't think he really really earned that at least not yet I just don't I just don't feel yeah he may be titled main event I just don't think he does I just don't think he is a main event like he's he's a draw of course because because of his uh stuff with the bloodline I'm not going to take that away from him but the fact like oh yeah he's going to be the cha- the champion the top champion of the raw brand I just don't see it yeah I- this is a very unusual circumstance. I see what you're saying about the whole Daniel Bryan yes chance situation. Obviously, that was misjudged severely. And I think, honestly, this is being misjudged as well. However, there's one key difference. And I think that's how it shows up on television. Where a lot of it is just like you see the entire crowd doing the hand things, doing the yeet chants, all that stuff. There are times when it does not translate into being genuinely over. But again, when you're actually in that live crowd and you're actually interacting with real live people face to face and parents are bringing their kids and who are decked out fully in Jey Uso shirts and they're just walking around going yeet in the parking lot and in the stands and in the popcorn and the, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. Like, Jay is really resonating with people and it's like, it's been like a sort of a slower build. And it's just like, I guess just that one little extra yeet that got him over the top. So I'm like the, I see what you mean, but I feel like this is sort of a new take on the same phenomenon, but the end result is still the same. Does that make sense? It does. And maybe a month from now, I'll eat my words and I'll just I'll say that I was wrong and that. He he is getting he is getting over, but yeah, maybe if he, I will I say know, the maybe, pacing there, there, is very unusual. It, it he needs I feel like he needs something to really feel like he's. Like that that face of the of a brand, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think because of that weird pacing, he hasn't have had that feud outside of the bloodline yet. I he think need, once he, just he does needs something, once he has that one big feud, I think that everyone, not just then, that'll be the last thing that'll really clinch main event Jeu. So, and for all we know, maybe this is a more longer term feud for the world heavyweight championship or something like that. Who's who can say, but let me put it this way. When it comes, when it comes to Damian priest's world heavyweight championship, I'm actually looking forward to the inevitable priest versus Balor match that I am looking for. Uh, Damian priest and Jay Uso. It's funny you say that because I actually, the way you feel about Jey Uso is how I feel about Damian Priest, where where, at, where I was in the crowd for WrestleMania 40, it seemed like everyone was way more hyped for the cash-in than Damian Priest actually being World Heavyweight Champion. Funny that, enough, I, I, actually, I actually do feel the same way with Priest. Like how I even said that, like they're, they... It may be the world, ch- like maybe the top title of the Raw brand, but it doesn't feel like the main, like the main storyline of that show. It actually, in all honesty, it feels like there are two or three other storylines more more important than that. There's obviously Drew McIntyre and CM Punk. There's uh, Sami Zayn Chad, and Chad Gable. I think that's much more intriguing than what's going on with that with the uh, the World Championship. And then there's um. Uh, the there's Becky Lynch, and then there's the inev- uh, the inevitable Rhea Ripley versus Liv Morgan. Hell, this past Raw, you have Liv Morgan in the background walking out of a room in the hallway, and immediately after her is Dominic Mysterio. It's actually happening. Liv is stealing Do- stealing Dom from mommy, and I absolutely love it. I'm just like, yes, I oh, I love it. 
Ah, uh, see, that's how excited I am about something that, that's not this world championship match. And I think that now it sucks because I really that. do like these guys. I like these guys. I just don't think they real like they need I a just, proper build is what they need. Maybe it's also because uh, Damian Priest spent most of his time feuding with R Truth, which is which was more a com was more a, like a comedy storyline. So it's like it's that that curse of booking your money in the bank poorly, which doesn't matter because he's going to possibly win it in the first place. I, I didn't think Damian Priest was going to have a failed cash in. Absolutely not. Yeah. But he, he lost, he definitely lost some steam holding on to that briefcase for the, for that long. I do agree. Uh, WrestleMania 40 was a great moment, but I think that both of these guys, both Jay and Damian Priest, I think they both just need they need time for this feud to bloom a little bit. It needs time to grow and turn into a proper title chase and a proper feud. And I think then everyone then everything will be on copacetic on their end. This they just maybe need that's some just time. a thing. Man, maybe they will need some because as just as of right now, it just feels like a filler. It does, and right now, at least for this match, yeah, it probably is a filler. It's going to mm-hmm. be interesting to see how this progresses over the next several weeks, months, however they want to give it. Then I think we're going to see the full picture. Okay. But in the meantime, we have one more match to predict that is cur- of the ones that are currently announced tonight. We have, of course, what will most likely be the main event, Cody Rhodes defending his WWE Championship. That sounds really great to say against AJ Styles. And with that, we talked for so much, I forgot who gets the first pick. So, Tarek, I guess I'll give it to you first. Uh, I th- Yeah, I think you actually... I think you went first with the World Championship match. Uh, the one thing... I think this match is match of the night. Just because of who's in this match. It's AJ Styles and Cody Rhodes. And I think the real disappointing thing about this feud so far is that it's it's a similar it's a similar thing to the world heavyweight title match, but not as extreme is that they don't they never really had time to really build anything. You had a contract signing and it was very straightforward and to the point. It's I like the fact that it's like yeah, he AJ Styles is the heel, but he but it's two guys who respect each other, and I just feel like like I this feud needs a little more meat, which I kind of hope this match actually this feud continues on after this pay per view, because I do want them to reference the fact that AJ Styles fought Dusty Rhodes for the NWA Heavyweight Championship back in the day, like a title they both have won. So they had like, a match together. No, uh, AJ Styles and Dusty Rhodes. Okay, keep on going on. I'm going to look this up. I'm going to see if I can... I need to but, see this. But, yeah, for the uh, NWA Heavyweight Championship. I don't remember what year it was. But, uh, yeah, they, they they definitely had a match together. And I kind of... And I want them to... Add that to it. Just to add some more meat to this, and I don't. I hope they continue this feud after this pay per view because I don't want. The, I don't want this to be a filler feud. I, like people have been comparing, uh, have just been saying, "Oh, this is not the right. This isn't really that great a feud." Just have for Cody Rhodes' first title, first title defense, and I disagree. And I, I wish this is just the start to. I guess raise up AJ Styles stock, especially now that like you have people like Roman gone, you need, you need to build up your, uh, your talent. And I think this is the start. This this is the right direction for it. Hmm. As a sidebar. Yeah, it does look like it's on the TNA wrestling YouTube channel. And yeah, it looks like they, uh, they did indeed. They did indeed have a match. Dusty Rhodes versus the young AJ Styles. 
incredible. And I think that's yeah. just, I think that it's actually great. 2003, uh, October 8th, 2003. I knew it was the early, I thought it was, I was thinking 2006, but yeah, it was, uh, but yeah, early 2000s. Incredible. Wow. That's a nice little bit of history. So yeah, I would and love it's, to. And it's not, it'll be a nice build. It'll be a nice, uh, like maybe they'll have that as the, go, as the go home, sh- uh, on the go home show of SmackDown. But I just feel I just feel like this is the type of match that AJ Styles needs to build some stock back up and to make him up there in the main event level for hmm. SmackDown for people that for a level that a show that kind of needs uh big heels because all you have is just this new bloodline but they're kind of like finding their feet and being the top heels uh, being uh being big heels. So for just you're I'm gonna going pick Cody with... Rhodes to successfully successfully Sorry. retain. I don't know if I, I realize I didn't even say it yet. Cody Rhodes. To okay, win. I was like, okay, I wasn't sure if I was just distracted with trying to find the the Cody <laughs> the the Dusty Rhodes AJ Styles match, but yeah, I am also going to join you on that. Yeah, after all of that, after everything we saw, this is going to be a really good match, but it's not it's not going to result in AJ Styles win. Cody needs to have at least a somewhat solid non-transitional title win after all of that. And again, I do if there is I do believe there is something there, but I just I want to see more of this, but again, it's not long after WrestleMania. A lot of these feuds need a little bit more time to cook, and I think that's what we're going to get right after this. So yeah, I'm going to go with Cody to win. Yeah. Of, and there we go. of the two world championship matches. Oh, my internet connection is unstable. Okay, uh, yeah, of the you. two world Follow title up. matches, this this is the like. Okay, of the two, yeah, I have a little message saying that my internet connection is unstable. You're still but coming through again. That's going to be something end. that I'm, that's awesome. Um. Of the two world title matches, I feel like this is the one that actually w- could continue beyond backlash over the world championship. Nice Penta shirt. Yes, thank you. I just needed to <laughs> get a cobweb. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I just stood up. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> got that from the Lucha Libre Superstore, I believe. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, got some great, pen- including they got some great Penta shirts that you just can't get on AEW shop. So if you want some good Lucha things, go check them out. That's Lucha Libre Superstore, probably .com, whatever. Look them. Free free sponsor on Scholars. Yes. Hey, sponsor the show. We would love that. Send Send us free shirts. We'd love it. Yeah, right. Oh, I would love that. But all that being said, unless there is some more matches added on this week's SmackDown right before the show, that's all we got. Those are our knowing, predictions. Yes. Knowing Triple H, knowing Triple H, how he books pay-per-views, this, it's probably just going to be this. He likes having small, he likes having small uh, cards for his big, for his big, his uh, premium live events. Hey. I, I expect there's probably going to be a little bit more sauce to this show if that's the case. But hey, regardless, if there, assuming there isn't anything more added between now and then, those are our predictions. So, of course, that means we got to turn it over to you, our fellow fans. Who is going to walk out of Backlash as a champion? Is everything, uh, are your picks the same as ours? Whatever you think, let us know. Drop us a line all across the internet. YouTube comments, Facebook posts, Instagram posts. We're not on TikTok yet, but hey, drop us a line there is not as well. And of course, you can also join the conversation personally on X slash Twitter slash whatever the hell you want to call it. Cool. Where can he reach you? You can reach me at the Avatar. And you can reach me at I'm Robbie Rage. There's going to be a lot to watch this weekend. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Speaking of Lucha, good Lucha things. Enjoy your holiday. Enjoy wrestling. We know we will. Enjoy your Star Wars day. And your Star Wars day. We're going to be enjoying it all because you know who we are. We are the Scholars of Wrestling, 
and you have just been schooled. You're welcome. You're welcome. See you all in France for Backlash. <laughs>